Yo, what's going on guys? It's Cynical and welcome back to another episode of Sea Salt Snippets. I know that recently we've been doing a lot of different episodes for Sea Salt Snippets and uh, that's pretty much only because there has been a lot of sort of smaller topics uh, recently that I've wanted to talk about. So, welcome back to another episode, guys. Hope you're having a fantastic day. Without further ado, let's just jump straight into it. So first off for today, I thought we'd sit down and talk about some brand new upcoming Kingdom Hearts merch. Now, as you guys should know, San Diego Comic Con is currently going on. And very recently, Square Enix have actually announced some brand new Bring Arts figures, which is super exciting. So, the very first one right here is Kingdom Hearts 3 Kairi. Yes, finally, we have a Kairi figure at long last, an official one anyway. And it looks absolutely awesome. Uh, obviously, this is Kingdom Hearts 3 Kairi, so she has her Kingdom Hearts 3 attire on. She's got the shorter hair. Um, now, obviously, this is just a prototype. This is generally... Uh, what Square Enix like to do with their Bring Arts or Play Arts Kai figures. They tend to actually show off the prototypes at certain events, uh, showing a sort of grayscale model at first, and then in time to come if they actually do need to make changes after the reception of the event itself, then they can do that. But for the most part, this is pretty much what we can expect from the Kingdom Hearts 3 Bring Arts Kairi figure. It looks really cool, and I'm just so happy that finally Kairi is actually getting either a Bring Arts or a Play Arts. It's been way too long, man. Like, Sora has so many of these figures, so it's really cool to start seeing other characters getting that same kind of love. And speaking about other characters receiving this kind of love, Neku from The World Ends With You is actually receiving a Bring Arts figure as well. This is it on screen as of right now. And similar to Kairi, it is just simply a prototype figure. Super cool though, because this would mark the very first time we've actually ever received a Bring Arts figure for a World Ends With You character. And of course it had to be Neku, the main protagonist of the game. Even furthermore, Square Enix have revealed the Kingdom Hearts versions of both Cloud and and Sephiroth and there's going to be bring arts versions for these guys as well. This is them on screen. They look really really nice. Obviously this is their Kingdom Hearts attires. The cloud we're seeing is obviously Cloud's attire from Kingdom Hearts 1 and then in Kingdom Hearts 2 he ended up using his Advent Children outfit. Personally I really like the Sephiroth one. I've always loved his Kingdom Hearts outfit. I definitely do want to pick this up when it comes out just so that I can look over at it in my display case and it can remind me of all of the times I got my butt cheeks handed to me. And last up in the ways of brand new Kingdom Hearts merch, a company that goes by the name of PDP, which is actually known for creating video game accessories across PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and Nintendo Switch, are actually making a Keyblade. Now, I believe this is actually officially licensed, and the really cool thing about this is it comes nowhere close to Bandai's uh, Proplica Keyblade in terms of Price. You guys should know that recently the Bandai Proplica Keyblade came out, which marks the very first officially licensed and branded Keyblade we have ever received. But the issue with the Bandai Proplica Keyblade is it is so expensive. For me, I actually have to pay like $330. And I believe over in the US it's something like 250 or, or something like that, which is pretty damn pricey for like a prop, right? For something that you're just gonna like put around your house, you're not really gonna get much use out of. So for people who don't wanna be spending big bucks on a Keyblade, this is the perfect alternative. From the seams of it, it is officially licensed. It's been made by an official company. And the price of this goes for 40 US dollars, which is absolutely insane. Keep in mind that this is one-to-one, -one, so it is life-size. The materials this Keyblade is made out of is foam and plastic. When you look towards the Proplica Keyblade made by Bandai, for the most part, that Keyblade is also made out of plastic as well. So really, I can't imagine that this Keyblade right here from PDP would actually feel much different from the Proplica at all. The only differences that you're going to be seeing is obviously Bandai's Proplica has all the inbuilt features like the magic spell effects, the sound effects, the Keyblade projector light at the tip of the Keyblade, but of course, if you're not into that kind of stuff, you're just looking for a cheaper Keyblade to just mount on your wall somewhere, this is definitely the perfect alternative. This actually releases on October 1st, and as of right now, you can actually go ahead and place a pre-order. I'm going to leave the link to this in the description down below. Next up, a user that goes by the name of Tanuji over on the Dissidia Reddit recently datamined Dissidia NT and came across some pretty interesting stuff in the ways of Kingdom Hearts. Now, do not get your panties in a twist. He did not come across stuff like, you know, Kingdom Hearts characters as playable characters, or Sora, or something like that. It was already confirmed by Tetsuya Nomura during a Dissidia NT livestream, 
prior to the game's release, Winamar actually confirms that Kingdom Hearts wouldn't actually be coming to Dissidia NT in the ways of actually having some of the Kingdom Hearts characters as playable fighters. But in the ways of potentially more Kingdom Hearts outfits for characters, that's one thing that could be coming. So within the Tanushi Datamine, he actually came across some code names uh, for Kingdom Hearts outfits for both Cloud as well as Squall. Uh, as you guys can see right here, 7 and 8 read Kingdom Hearts Cloud 1, and 8 reads Kingdom Hearts Squall 1. Now, in case you guys don't know, in Dissidia 012 Joe Decim, Cloud, Squall, as well as Sephiroth all had the Kingdom Hearts outfits available through a DLC. Now, currently in Dissidia NT, Sephiroth actually does have his Kingdom Hearts outfit available to put on himself, but in the ways of both Cloud as well as Squall, uh, unfortunately, they don't actually have the Kingdom Hearts outfit. So maybe in due time, we might finally see that Kingdom Hearts DLC come through for both Cloud and Squall for the game. Although it's interesting because I'm not too sure if what this person has data mined was on the game from day one in terms of files on the disc. Or more so, are these files that this guy found through a recent update or patch that was recently added to the game? Basically what I want to know is how long have these files been lying around within the files of NT? Because it makes me think, well, if these have been in here since day one, then maybe we might not actually see these outfits be put into the game. And so they could have just been used for perhaps maybe reference or something like that. But because Sephiroth's already got his outfit in NT, it really doesn't make any sense to hold back both Squall and Cloud's Kingdom Hearts outfit. You may as well just just chuck it in. And next up, we have a tiny little bit of news when looking towards Repliku in Kingdom Hearts 3, the scene within the Pirates of the Caribbean trailer that made a lot of people almost poop themselves, probably not as much as the Aquanaut scene, but fairly well close. So as we know, Repliku is back in Kingdom Hearts 3. We saw him at the end of the Pirates trailer uh, during a scene where Riku is sitting on the shore of Destiny Islands, and it looks like he's actually having a conversation with Repliku. Now, this is pretty strange because as we know in Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memory, during Rebirth slash Rebirth mode, which is of course Riku's story, we actually end up destroying the Riku replica. Like, we defeat him. He died. He's dead. What is he doing here? Now, this is the reason why everyone absolutely lost their mind when they saw this character, because yes, we defeated this dude. So yeah, what is he doing here? Well, recently, within the extended Famitsu interview with Tetsuya Nomura, he actually mentioned a pretty interesting key point or potential key point towards Repliku, so let's read up on this. Famitsu said there was another scene in the trailer that piqued our interest. The current Riku was sitting with someone who looked exactly like a younger Riku. Is that the replica? Namara said, who knows? He may be an illusion. So obviously Namara is sort of like teasing right here, but yes, did we actually take a second to sort of maybe even step back to consider that this thing right here might in fact not even be Repliku, but more so this could just be a vision, a sort of uh, flashback type of thing that maybe Riku is having during that moment of Destiny Islands, where potentially he might be thinking back to either the Repliku or possibly even his times being possessed by Ansem when he was in dark form. The confusing thing about this though is, I know for me personally, when I first of all saw this scene, I instantly connected it to the scene that we saw within the Don't Think Twice trailer back earlier this year. We see a scene of Mickey and Riku standing in the dark margin with Riku holding his broken way to dawn. He places it in the sand and he says he's going to leave this hair for the other me. So instantly I was sort of thinking that, okay, this other me must be Repliku and now that he's actually within the game at the end of the Pirates trailer, this must be the person he he's referring to, but maybe not? And also, even if this is Repliku, this is Kingdom Hearts, so there's like 106 different ways that this guy could come back through, you know, obviously Tetsuya Nomura's interesting way of storytelling. Uh, just because he did die in Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories, I I'm sure that if, you know, Nomura really wanted him back for a particular reason, then there will be a specific reason as to why he is back. The only confusing thing that I currently see with having Repliku back is what would be the specific reason for actually bringing this guy back per se. He did of course play a pretty key part in Chain of Memories and he was essentially used to confuse Sora with Sora thinking that Repliku is the real Riku. So for me, I kind of feel as if his purpose has already been served within Chain of Memories. I really don't see a key purpose as to why he needs to return for Kingdom Hearts 3. But maybe if he is actually coming back for Kingdom Hearts 3 and this really is Repliku, then I'm sure a reason will be given to us when we play the game. But anyway guys, with all that being said, that is pretty much going to do it for today's episode of Sea Salt Snippets. In the comment section down below, let me know your thoughts and opinions. Hopefully you guys are having a fantastic day. I'm Cynical, and until next time, I'll catch you guys later. Peace.
Hit him on the page, you'll be coming through stain. Go dead my mouth when you suckers be bluffing. Milk crank, gaming up your bitch though. Catch me in the back playing Super Nintendo.